Hello guys, this is JP Sarri. Uh, once again, I'm coming to you with another review and actually this is like a second part of the last book review that I started, that I upload, upload uh, a few days ago and this is the, you know, the Spider-Man, the Revenge of the Sinister Six and again, I'm continuing this, uh, I, will, I would call this a second part even though they're not really tied together, uh, they are tied together story-wise. So this is the other collection, like I said before, I'm kind of sad and disappointed that nothing has been said about the continuing of the Amazing Spider-Man making in that second volume from Todd McFarlane, one that includes his art or his work with the Spider-Man uh, magazine just by itself, you know, with the name that he started and he was uh, able to do 15 issues of that of that run and then, you know, the other artists came and took over or anything that includes Eric Larson at the beginnings of Mark Bagley. I think also it would be nice to see them in, a, in the omnibus format at some point. But so far nothing has been said. Eventually I'm, I'm sure that it will happen. I don't know how long it will take for the Marvel to take notice of those things. Spider-Man The Revenge of the Sinister Six. This is a storyline that follows pretty much the storyline previously that I mentioned with the Sinister Six. and. And it really emphasized, and for many, many people, this is the turning point, point for uh, Eric and for his work. And this is for many people the favorite run, his favorite art. This is when reality, Eric finally defines his art going forward. Uh, many artists within the first years of their, you know, when they're pretty young, they're still trying to develop their art, they're still trying to figure it out, they're still trying to come up with what is fits better to their style and I think in this moment in this in this book especially in this book you can see that defining moment in the, in the previous Sinister Six that sometimes the the art was different you know and, and some issues the art is more realistic and I prefer when he does realistic stuff and in other ones it, it, it felt a little more cartoony it was not as you know uh, it didn't maintain the same level of art uh, it was great both ways but it was different and and here on this one on the revenge of the center six and we're gonna go through page every page you're gonna see that there is a the R maintains the same pace alright let me show you this for scale pur uh, for you know for scale purposes for for reference as you can see this is the revenge of the sinister six I oh, love this art I love this art uh, as you can see the size and this is the other one the spider-man the sinister six uh, prior to this there are a few editions and we, I will show you some of them probably I will give you an idea uh, of this when this is this is kind this is coming from Amazing Spider-Man, while this is coming from Spider-Man, uh, the run that's, that was started by Todd, um, you know, and the first fifteen, um, the the first couple of issues actually are contained in other premier edition size books, and I'll show you some. Of, I will give you some visual references for them later on in this video, but here you can see this is the Amazing Spider-Man, the omnibus, and as you can see, it's a little little larger. Just, just a little bit, not as much, but it gives you a clear reference of size. Let me put it on top of it. Of course, you can see right there is a little tiny, it's a little larger in size there, but the difference is not as big. Uh, definitely, these books are nice. Definitely, I like them. They're small. Uh, it will be better if they were all contained in the omnibus again. Uh, but, you know, if you don't have it right now and you would like to read them and you would like to collect the books, I think you, you, you have a good deal here. All right, now we go into the book. And as you can see right here, I really like this art. Um, there is always, um, of course, you know, with the direct editions, there's always a, um, and this is a direct edition that you can always buy that, that is offered if you kind of, you know, you can pre-order from the distributor directly, from the, the company directly. Uh, to be honest, on this, on this uh, premiere editions, I wasn't, and and mostly for most things, I've never been crazy uh, about those special edition things, like a pre-ordered type of deal. Uh, yes, some of them are good and good looking, and sometimes I prefer those because of the art. But on this premiere editions, I actually like the art better on this, the black, you know, background with the new coloring on the art. I prefer those; it really pops better. Because on the this premier edition is actually the the, the pre-order types the the direct sale one you have to um, the the art was actually the copy or was just the cover of one of the issues contained here so I didn't see the point because in reality the covers are included inside the the pages so I, I don't see the point of having that I don't, to me that's not an extra 
uh, but this looks much better in my opinion as you can see right there as the other one uh, other ones in this line it says marble and it has the names Larson uh, Kavanaugh and I, I want to explain a little more about the, uh, Mr. Kavanaugh and McDaniel uh, Scott McDaniel I think and uh, Revenge of the Mr. Six Spider-Man and here in the background I love the way he, this all the art is here Says the six has never been more sinister than in this start studded saga. This is the second saga, pretty much, and done. And the great part of this is that actually this was not only drawn by uh, Eric, uh, uh, of course, and as you can see, it was also written by Eric. He did both things. Uh, of course, the last previous one, the the, the Revenge of the Sinister, so not the Revenge, but the uh, the Return of the Sinister Six. Uh, on that one, it was David Michelini, the one that wrote. Uh, the story, but it was, uh, you know, and Eric did the art, but here he had the, the first shot, his first opportunity to do it in a big stage because he was already doing it at Savage Dragon uh, as a character that he created. Uh, but here he has the opportunity to do it uh, in the major stage, you know, in, the, in this case for Marvel. And as you can see right there, the price of this, P, uh, this thing when it came out, it is uh, $29.99 in U.S., $32.99 in Canada. You can find them, uh, if you can find them, because they're a little hard to find, you probably can find it for a little less than that price. All right, inside the the you know in this case the the dust jacket, you can see there is an intro, Sinister Showdown, and pretty cool. And on this side, of course, as always, you know the creators he has a, a biography of in this case Eric Larson, Terry Kavanaugh that he does a part of in this book, and it's Scott McDaniel. Uh, Scott McDaniel is one of my favorite also artists of back in the pretty much in the 90s and the mid 90s, especially. What his art with and with DC Comics, especially with um, and Nightwing, it's one of my favorite uh, comic books of that era. I really loved uh, uh, what he did with Nightwing. Uh, put that aside now. Let's get the book again. The the same reference as the the other ones. Uh, it's black, you know, um, binder. Uh, Spider Man in red, and it says Revenge of the Sinister Six. Nothing in the back. Now let's go into the book. Uh, this red thing make it look kind of nice and it goes straight this is uh, one of the things that I never like about this one editions is the books the there was not as good the paper you see so close you can't really turn it the omnibuses that they do a much better job in that part and here you get all the credits and here it is it starts with in this case is spider-man nothing and it has nothing really to do with um, the story in itself with the the Sinister six but this is a uh, as you can see, Spider-Man, and this is a team up with, in this case, Beast from the X-Men, and this is number, as you can see right there, number 15. I love the art. Uh, as, as you can see the progress, and if you have, if you follow Eric Larson through what he did with my Amazing Spider-Man, you see a progress in his art, a change in tone, uh, more dynamic. Uh, he has a lot of, um, you know, it was very vibrant, um, very different, um, extreme. And as you can see on that cover, you can see all that. I love the way he, the what he does put in the back. I love his backgrounds. One of the favorite things that I have for Eric is the way he does backgrounds. Look at this image of Spider-Man. I really love it. And one thing I like about this edition, the paper is thick. It's even thicker than some of the new omnibuses. And the colors really pop. And this one even pop more than the other one. It really pops. And But like I was telling you, I like Eric. And Eric did both things. You know, he wrote the stories. And um, in this case, for this run. Uh, and also, he also did the same thing for this issue. And this is only issue number 15. And going into the page, I love his art. I love the way he does actually Mary Jane. Uh, I love it. Uh, she looks very uh, sexy there. Uh, you know, marks everything well, the figures, I love the way he faced, the new coloring, it is not a new coloring, but it was remastered colors, look a lot better now, it does, they look good, They do, and in this type of paper, laminated paper, really looks fantastic, and as you can see right there, of course, if it was bigger, it would be a lot better, but, uh, you know, I like the way it is, and as you can see, uh, landscape, city landscapes that he did. Uh, he's one of my favorite uh, city landscapers in the sense that uh, artists that does city landscape, you know, uh, buildings and the backgrounds of New York City. He's just fantastic uh, in, in in any city because he does that too with the Savage Dragon. He did that with Chicago and, and all the major cities that you know uh, he part, you know, especially Chicago, but most of the major cities that uh, you know Savage Dragon has been involved. Or he's been fight, fighting crime and he's been in New York City. He's been in other cities, ten other towns. Love it. And I love all that, you know, all the spreads, the big scenes. So this is 90s, you know, for me. This is the 90s. And this is an art that, you know, it's so 
so so beautiful you know and like you can see that you know the image you know many of the figures you know you can see bees you know looking terrific even even when he gets you know being pounded you know he looks terrific look at that you know he's jumping there you know that is art to me eric is a great artist you know not as praised as many others because you know i don't know because like i said before because the time where he started doing his art but regardless of that, he did such a fantastic job. And look at that spray, one of my favorite ones. That that should be in a post, you know, in a, in a poster somewhere, you know. I will have it, you know, frame or something. It's just fantastic. You know, Bees looks terrific. He does a terrific Bees. No, you know, Bees is one artist that not many artists can really do well for some reason. Uh, I've seen some of different the different variations of Bees. Uh, although I like, you know, in this case, um. John, Bur John Burns art. Uh, I don't think his uh, bees was the best. Uh, although a lot of people love it. Uh, when he was part of the Avengers, when he was part of the X-Men, when John Byrne was involved with the, the artistic process there. Uh, I like what, uh, in this case, with the art of, of course, Jim Lee. But I like uh, when he took, you know, when he, uh, in this case, uh, Eric had the chance to do it. I like the way he did it. I really do. He looks terrific. He looks kind of dark and mean. Uh, he looks great. And as you can see, the figure. You know, he does that. One thing about Eric and his women is that um, when he does women, they're very muscular. Very feminine, but strong. They're not weak. Um, she has a body right there, as you can see. Strong body. And he does great things. He does fantastic. And, uh, you know, and of course, this was prior to all the nonsense that happened back in, you know, a few years back with one more day and all that nonsense where they changed Marvel changed the the fact where the Spider-Man never got married or whatever he forgot he got married all that nonsense that they did um to me this was a good time you know and like I said if you you have seen my review of the previous in this case the uh, the Return of the Sinister Six you can see the art has changed has evolved it is more dynamic of course it is stronger uh it, it looks more terrific and here, of course, it goes to start, you know, we already went to the story, uh, we jump. Um, there is a jump from this episode, from this one to this one, there is one, only one issue, and that's number uh, 17. And actually, that one was the return of Todd McFarlane to, uh, when he did his last issue with this, with Spider-Man book. Uh, he did the last one, and that was actually a crossover with the X-Force, uh, with, uh, uh, with Rob Liefeld. And he did that crossover, uh, Spider-Man and the X-Force. And it is a good one, and actually, it's also included on the X-Force. Um, it is included on the X-Force um, um, Omnibus. And I will, at some point, I will review that one. I have that one also, and I will review it, so I'll show you. Uh, I'm going to you know, talk more about Rob Liefeld. Uh, the love and hated Rob Liefeld. Uh, I don't think he... Well, I'm not going to talk about it right now. Uh, but here you can see. Fantastic. And when you look at this and the design here, you can see Super Patriot all the way through. Uh, one of the characters created by the um, by uh, Eric um, in, in his now in, in, through Image Comics. And another one of his favorite characters, uh, uh, beloved characters uh, for the fans. And look at that. You know, that, that's a Danny Ketch. Um, that's, uh, you know, the Ghost Rider. Looking terrific on that jump you know, fighting, it is so much action, you know, the colors are terrific, and I can tell you that, the luck is terrific, look at that image, I like the face, you know, the expression, the darkness on this, you know, you can see the dark side of Eric, you know, he has a, a way to do things, look cartoony, but um, very dark, and you look at Sandman, right there, look at that expression, that face, you know, all the strokes, the little colors, you know, the little, sh you know, the, the, the inking and all that is just fantastic, whoever did the inking on this did also a terrific job, um, uh, I don't really remember the name, and to be honest, sometimes it's kind of sad that we don't remember inkers, but the truth is that it's just, you know, they just follow up, and you know, it has to be an amazing job just to, all you have to do is really give that inking to one of the best artists in the industry um that has to be a job in itself and uh, something that you should be proud i personally would you know to look at the art just on filter from the beginning and as you can see beautiful back beautiful of course <laughs> uh you know I, I you know if there's somebody sexy in comics it should go one of the the sexiest women in comics of course has to go to mj look at that 
you know, and you know, Eric does fantastic when he when he draws women. It, they just look gorgeous. They just look terrific. Of course, not more than you know. There's comic like, so you're not gonna see real life, but you can see the center six all together back again, and you can see that you know the dyna you know how dynamic is you know the the jumps. The saw and that's something that you're gonna see with Eric in his art, and also with Savage Dragon. You see a lot of jumps and people just going from one place to the other, moving really fast. There's a lot of action. You know, some artists can do it. Some artists don't. Here you can see the other. Um, the, this is the another, the number 19. And actually, this is the cover for the direct direct sale, direct edition, um, the special pre-order edition. Uh, like I said, you know, I don't see the point of having that in the, on the dust jacket when reality is included inside. But looking at this, it is amazing. Um... I can really tell. I, I love the art as, as much as far as we can go. I'm going to move here. You can tell Mr. Fix It. That's the Hulk. Uh, I'm not going to explain the, the ins and outs of the story. I recommend this story. One of the best 90s story. Yes, it is campy. Yes, it's not like a, a serious type of story, but it is fantastic. I love when he does the, the jumping and you see Hulk is jumping. Um, you know, it's launching towards um, Dr. Octopus. He does that. As you saw that, he does that with the bees. And he does that with the Savage Dragon. So, some, some of those uh, little poses that um, normally artists do a lot. Some artists have like a little signature poses. Uh, like Jack Kirby always had his signature poses in his art. Um, and as you can see, there's another cover. Beautiful cover. Uh, you know, it is just fantastic. Uh, his solo, one of the, those characters, it still exists around, um, not a major character, there were so many characters back in the day, um, that in reality, they haven't made it true as much, some they have survived, like, uh, those 90 characters, like, that, you know, Deadpool, they have really made it big, well, the characters did not as much, but they're still part of the Marvel Universe, Nova, as you can see right here, there's so many, inclusion of many different characters, you're gonna see, uh, Deadlock, he looks fantastic. I love the way he did it. I was not too crazy about the deadlock that the design that was used recently in recent years uh, is the same, but it's not as imposing as the way I think Eric did. He did a fantastic job with that. But as you can see right there, the facial expression, uh, fantastic. Peter Parker really showing some muscle there, you know, and of course, you know, MJ really looking sexy again you know I, I i can only to be honest if i have to choose one of the reasons why you have to love eric it has to be mj if you want to love this book hey you know the ads are right there you know what can you expect you know call me sick i don't know you know but the truth is these artists are good and eric is good Eric is good in that so, you know and the way he does portrays this is 90s all the way through and um i'm gonna keep them going a little faster there's another right there Another of the, you know, pretty cool. They're battling together, you know, a little, little, with a little armor. Uh, fantastic. I love the way he does the shadows, you know. Uh, you know, the solo, he's right there. The expression, the mouse. This is her, the signature style of Eric. Uh, I can tell you one thing. Eric, uh, this art with Savage Dragon it has diminished a little bit over the years. You know, now there is over the 200 uh, mark, and it is fantastic. It's good, you know, but I, I, I prefer when he started in the beginning. Of course, you know, I think his heart has that extra kick that, you know, that many artists don't have. Uh, really, it's one of my favorite books. And as you can see, oh, man, it's hard really for me to do these reviews sometimes because I'm so embellished about this. Normally, I don't open these books as much because, of course, like I said, I have it on digital media and I can read it all the time I want and I go back over and over sometimes. Uh, to you know to to read to get some reference for stories or whatever but um but the truth is is that reading all these stories you know and going and i don't use this books but opening these books and looking at this is just fantastic and this size you know yeah you can have a big tab but the doublets are nice but sometimes having a book in your hands the feeling of the book, and of course, this is part of the dust jacket, of course, but, you know, the background has been changed, the colors have been changed, it looks terrific. At number 22, we're getting closer to the end of this book. It is just terrific. Look at that expression. He looks very, uh, like a maniac right there, you know, the vulture. Uh, fantastic, you know. Here you can see all those expressions. Uh, you know, uh, Peter Parker waking up in the morning, tired after a long night of battling and as you can see the 
the beauty and there's a lot of references of course to the era of the 90s early 90s you can see in the in the conversations the references of things of the time music uh, art television all that stuff you're gonna see all kind of references there uh, and that is a throwback for me reading this and kind of gives me a smile on my face reading all those comments look at that spread right there the Mysterio, the Sinister Six, um, they are here, they invading Hydra, uh, Hydra Vase, fantastic, just terrific. You know, this is a really campus story, a lot of people involved, you know, so many um, people involved in the story. It's just amazing, so many superheroes, villains, um, uh, you know, just simple, simple enough, you know, it's just, I like it, you know, really really like it. I hear, uh, I'm trying to remember the name, it's Sleepwalker, that's the name of this superhero of the 90s, um, you know, like, you know, if you want to know more of the story, I'm never as familiar with the Sleepwalker, I read some of the stories of Sleepwalker, not really crazy or fan of it, but it is involved, there's so many, that's one thing about a lot of crossovers, they involve a lot of artists, I think it's Paul, also Paul, the, pu the publishers wants to kind of like give a little more, um, you know cameos to those editions or superheroes that they want to produce more comics uh, for and as you can see right there and this is a famous now like the extended cover this actually was a cover that you can extend and you can open up this is the only thing I don't like about this is that they didn't give you the option to have the the fold that you know like a, I don't know like a poster you can a uh, poster that you can unfold that would be nicer than this because the reality here, you have the same problem that you have in other uh, book collections of Marvel. It's just cut in half and you really cannot see it well. So, uh, shame on that. I think that they could have come with a better idea, but they did not. And this is the final chapter. And as you can see, that this, the spread is there. Pretty cool looking. Really, there's a lot of action. You know, I highly recommend even the, you can see, like I said, there's cameos. And you can see uh, the Fantastic Four involved in the story you know 90s was a time you know the stories were not the smartest stories i think there is a desire nowadays to come up, come back to uh in comics into smarter stories especially in marvel but after so much you know you know things over the years a lot of evolving in the stories you know things have changed i heard somewhere that marvel is planning to destroy the whole thing uh, that's a rumor i'm not sure if it's true to start over again um would that be a good idea? I doubt it. I think that there's a lot of things that it might not work. I think a lot of people, they're still um, loyal to these characters. I am one of them. And I want to see stories, you know. But after so many artists had, you know, so many superheroes or villains and be killed and then revive and all that, you kind of lose some ground. You can really lose some objectivity on um, the way you do things and um but that does not mean uh, look at that spread is um in this case peter parker's birthday mean that the opportunity is not there to really create stories it's, it, it takes time maybe new writers fresh writers to do the job now this is diabolic uh this is a story that actually was contained um initially the this the revenge of the sinister six was planned to be just a four issue cross um you know four issue run but uh, actually, um, uh, Eric, he suffered a great loss in, 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 in that time. He suffered a great loss in the 90s. He, he, suffered, he lost his house in the Oakland fires of 19, 1991. Uh, so that really stretched the job. So they have to work around the clock. So two of the issues here, I think, is, um, uh, I'm not mistaken, probably, is, I think is uh, number 18 or maybe not, uh, number 19. They're, they're uh, small chapters. Um, they're like 13 pages per chapter. So in order to kind of fill the gaps, they, they, they decided to bring somebody else to bring another story. And they brought some, they brought Terry uh, Kavanaugh that I really don't know much about it. His art, his, the story, it's all right. It's not, but it, you know, it was a fill-in story just to fill on that. And it's Scott McDaniel, the penciler. And although I love Scott McDaniel's art, I'm not going to tell you that this is the best, um, uh, representation of his art. Uh, I think he was still kind of working things around, making things a little better. Uh, he was all right. I don't think this is his forte. I don't think that's his the style that kind of fits him the best. But, and to be honest, I'm not sure why Marvel decides to include the story here 
uh, maybe just to fill in the gaps or maybe just to be uh, as, uh, as loyal to the initial story or to the initial issues for everybody. But the good things that they did not include it in the middle, to where it would be confusing of the book, they decided to put those two stories together because there were two parts of the story at the end. So that's just a little extra. That's all it is. And this is Diablo as one supervillain. Um, you know, the story, it's all right. You know, it's not the greatest. The art is not the greatest. It's a feeling, and at least they put it at the end. So in reality, it's not in the way of your enjoyment when you're reading the story. But it's there, at least to complete the saga, at least to complete what was written on the issue. So that's a good thing. It's a complete thing. They did not do that with the Return of the Sinister Six, the first one that I already review, uh, because on the in the first annual of 1964, first annual, they, the story was like 72 pages, and they only include the first part where the, the Spider-Man battle the, 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 the Sinister Six, but the stories that came after on that same, in the same issue were not included. Um, so they missed the ball on that one. But the truth is that it was not necessary, and I don't think it was necessary to include the story here either. But... Well, you know, that's the way it is. And here is a, a couple images of some covers. Here you can see Spider-Man Revenge of Sinister 6. This is the, the, the trade paper back cover. And as you can see, there's a difference. I, live the, I like it that they include some art. They did not include that on the other one. They include some extras. And here's some afterwards. Here's a forward. This is, um, in this case, uh, Danny, uh, the editors, uh, read writing and making, you know, talking about Eric and his work phrasing his work. This actually would include some of the trade paperbacks. It's nice that they include it here. There's some other art um, done by other artists for other trade paperbacks. It's nice that this is also included here as reference. There's more art. As you can see, McDaniel, actually he did this one. Kind of nice, you know, looking, you know, the, 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 the art, the style that he used here. And you can go on. There's more artists here. Abraham Madison, um, doing this part. I think Roy Burton and Abraham Madison doing this pinup. Uh, it's pretty cool. I like the way they did that. And here, this one has a uh, reference to other ones. You have Death of Stacy, and this I pretty much just included on the Roger Stern, um, Roger Stern, you know, omnibus run of Spider-Man that I highly recommend too. It's Torment. That includes the, the first, I think, the first five uh, issues of the Spider-Man run. So this is also a must-have. Uh, in the meanwhile, if you don't have the, you know, if Marvel doesn't, uh, until Marvel produces another omnibus just for that purpose. This one already review. This is Perception. This is the second part. And I think there is a third part. But that third part also is included in, um, and this is for Spider-Man also, the book. And I think that's included in, in the, the Revenge uh, of Venom, of the Return of Venom, I, don't, I think. But that was a trade paperback. Well, now, finalizing this. Do I recommend this book? Heck yeah. I do recommend uh, Eric Larson any given day. Um, would this be the ultimate uh, story of Spider-Man? No, not in a million years. But it is an important part of the 90s. If you are a fan of uh, tremendous 90s art and you want to kind of experience it, you're young because I know a lot of my followers are very young. Probably you didn't grow up during that era. Probably you're a little younger than I. I, you know, not, not that old, but, you know, I already... Uh, getting close to uh, up upper 30s, getting closer to my 40s. Um, I really enjoy this art. I really enjoy the 90s. I grew up in that era as a teenager. It was a great time to be part of, to see comics, to read comics. Uh, the stories were not as involving or as important back in the day. It was just art. Uh, not as in the 80s where, you know, pretty much my comic fix started in the 80s and late 70s. Um, Really, it's an important time and place. Eric Larson, I don't think, like I said before, hasn't been praised as much as he deserved. But he is such a fantastic person. And a person that I highly recommend, an artist that I highly recommend. This is a great book. No questions asked. It's a tiny little story, but something that you need to read. I will have links where you can go. Maybe if you can, if, I'm going to try to find links for you to buy it if you want to buy it in this format. But if not, I will have links for Comixology or Amazon so you can get the digital edition for Kindle or any other device. Um, once again, I thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your support. Uh, stay tuned. I will have more book reviews, more omnibuses, more special edition books. Um, just for, for, for you, I'm going to try to expand a little more in not just Marvel, I'm going to try to expand towards other fields. You know, I collect all kind of books and all kind of comic books and special editions. 
so you know we can have a better look as you can see I'm a fan of the 90s 80s I'm a fan of the 70s I'm a fan of those eras but also I'm a fan of newer stuff uh, I'm just more picky about the newer stuff but still I have a, a appreciation for those that really go above and beyond the the Call of Duty you know and they do more and they try to give more to the fans of comics so thank you for watching once again uh, you know I'll see you in the next review uh, have a good day, have a good afternoon, have a good evening. See you again.